Great, wonderful. So welcome everybody to the Scorpio New Moon Distant Reiki Share. My goodness, we have so much to talk about. The November astrological energies are so strong. The galactic energy is so strong and so much healing, empowerment opportunities really available to us. Before we dive into the astrology, I would just like to share some announcements about basically what I have going on through the end of the year for those of you who like to plan and like to know when things are happening. So the first thing to mention is I'm not doing any, I'm not booking any more one-on-one readings or Reiki sessions right now because I'm teaching a lot. And so if you know you want a reading or a session with me, you can just send me an email and I will be creating a wait list for that so that you can be notified as soon as I open up some one-on-one slots. I might open up some in December, but I'm really trying to actually take some time off in December. So it might actually be in 2025 that those open up. So lots of different classes happening November 9th, Astrology Basics with Reiki, Introduction to the Aspects in Astrology. This is a key part of your astrological knowledge base and foundation base. It can be a tricky part to learn. I know I was really intimidated by the aspects and didn't understand them for a while in my early astrology journey, but they're really like once you get them, everything makes a whole lot more sense and it really deepens a lot of your astrology knowledge and interpretation. November 19th, as promised, I am doing another Pluto in Aquarius class. We had one earlier this year when Pluto went into Aquarius in January. And so this one is welcoming Pluto back into Aquarius, wherever Aquarius is in your natal chart. And the title that came for it is Rebirth into Soul Mastery. So I'm really, really excited for this class. We will be looking at the galactic astrology of Pluto and Aquarius for 2025 beyond and also be doing a Reiki journey with Pluto in Aquarius. So that's super exciting. Later this month as well, I'm teaching Holy Fire 3 World Peace Reiki Master training. So definitely check that out. That will be my last master class of the year. So if you're wanting to take that, definitely take advantage. I will offer Reiki 1 and 2 and Reiki Master next year also. November 30th, we have another free distant Reiki shared. These are every month, every new moon. So definitely keep coming back if you enjoy this. And December 7th, I'm teaching the final Astrology Basics with Reiki class for this year, and it will be an introduction to the moon. So we will look at the moon in the zodiac signs, the moon in the houses, and really start getting to know our moons more intimately. And that class will also include a Reiki journey, a Reiki experience, bringing in healing and empowerment with each of our moons. Very, very tender, very important part of our astrology charts. And I also wanted to mention for those of you who are like, I know I want to take all three of these classes, the astrology basics with Reiki, Pluto and Aquarius and the final astrology basics with Reiki. After you sign up for the first two classes, astrology basics with Reiki, the aspects and Pluto and Aquarius, if you're going to be signing up for the moon class, I will offer you a discount code to apply to that class so you can take advantage of, of, you know, just being an awesome member of the circle and to make it more accessible and as a little small way to say thank you for all of your support. So all the details and lots you can read on my website about each of those and sign up for any and all that speak to you. That's taylornorrisreiki.com. So today, 
today we have our Scorpio new moon. I did an in-depth video about this new moon. It was exact actually several hours ago at the time of recording this at the Distant Reiki Share on November 1st. So it's already occurred. We are still in that new moon phase. And this is, yes, like a super water moon energy, the sign of Scorpio, a water sign. We also have Mercury in Scorpio, Saturn in Pisces, Neptune in Pisces, Mars at the very last degree of Cancer. So this is emotional. This is sensitive. This is intuitive, mystical, magical, very, very deep. And so, and with Scorpio, Scorpio is an incredibly deep sign. So that is a bit of the energy we are working with. So many different galactic alignments here and the Reiki journey will really invite you to connect with any of the specific planetary energies you're needing to connect with at this time for your highest good because it's going to be different for everybody we all have different charts and so opening that up to you for your unique and specific healing and empowerment and any of the specific galactic energies you're needing to connect with as well because those will be a little bit different for all of us. It's interesting, one of the things I notice about this new moon, new moons are typically a time of new beginnings, planting a new seed of intention. But if you look at this chart, we have several oppositions at play as well. And the opposition aspect is an aspect with a similar energy to a full moon. It's two celestial bodies or astrological calculated points that are in opposition to one another in the same way that at the time of the full moon, you have the sun opposite the moon, and that's what makes it a full moon. So we always have the nodal axis in opposition to one another, and this has to do with our soul growth. So saying yes to more of our Aries energy, the healed expression of Aries energy that is independent and sovereign and free and courageous and clear and direct and charging ahead into new territory. The south node of the moon in Libra, which is all about relationships, harmony, balance, finding balance through imbalance, and also anchoring peace very, very deeply on all all the levels of our being from inner peace to peace in our relationships to peace on earth, peace amongst all creatures, all beings, peace within our galaxy, within our solar system, and far beyond that. So that's an opposition as well. Then we have a very powerful and dynamic opposition with Mars opposite Pluto, which I will be talking a little bit more about in the next slide. But this is very significant as these are the guiding planets for Scorpio zodiac sign. And this is an energy that will be with us, Mars opposite Pluto, really through the end of the year into January. And then it makes another exact opposition later on in 2025. So very, very powerful here. And as a just a beautiful counterbalance, which can manifest very beautifully, all of these can manifest very beautifully. They can also manifest at lower frequency vibrations. So just to name that too, is we have an opposition between Venus and Sagittarius aligning with the great attractor and Jupiter and Gemini aligning with at least three very, very powerful stars here. Venus and Jupiter considered very beneficial, sweet, expansive, just wonderful planets of blessings and good fortune and receiving here. So this is a very loud and a very powerful 
full or new moon that has that kind of full moon frequential undertone going on as well, simply by virtue of the the oppositions, at least three of those oppositions we have there, which, you know, I'm seeing another one here, Mercury opposite Uranus. It's a separating opposition, but this is very much the expansion and the upgrading of our mental bodies being able to, and Jupiter and Gemini even speaking to this as well, considering more perspectives, being more receptive to new ideas, groundbreaking ideas, future-oriented ideas and mental mindsets. And also welcoming in the galactic, welcoming in community energies here with Uranus and being okay with the new paradigms that are underway, being a powerful co-creator, this Mars opposite Pluto of the new paradigm that we are each so ready for at least in this circle and those who are watching this video recording. We will look now at some of the fire energies that are coming in and personally having a lot of fire in my chart and just, you know, to, to help balance all of these water energies. I think this is going to be in some ways very, very helpful. It can also be inflammatory and again, express in lower frequency possibilities, but the fire ultimately, I feel, is very, very balancing. So we have both Mercury and Mars entering fire signs. Tomorrow, November 2nd, Mercury will enter Sagittarius, and it will be in Sagittarius zodiac sign until January 8th of next year. So we get two months of Mercury in Sagittarius. And this is occurring because Mercury will be going through its retrograde cycle. And I have another slide towards the end of this presentation about that, taking you through the dates and some of the star alignments. So I will save that for now. But this feels passionate and creative and uplifting and expansive and just like a really nice change of pace for our mental bodies. On November 3rd, Mars will oppose Pluto. Exactly. So we've been building up to that opposition until November 3rd. And so November 3rd, we can expect some of that pressure to begin releasing and the energy to begin diffusing, which it needs to do. It certainly needs to do. There's been so much pressure, so much tension, so much of this pent up energy that the release is forthcoming. The release is imminent here. And Mars will oppose Pluto. And this is occurring in Cancer and Capricorn. So the very last degrees of Cancer and Capricorn. And then shortly after just what is that like 17, 16 to 17 hours later, Mars will be entering zodiac sign of Leo. And this also feels quite lovely. I don't know about y'all. I really am learning that I prefer Mars and the fire signs and the air signs personally, as the energy of Mars and Cancer has been just so it's so fluid. It's so fluctuating. If you think about the zodiac sign of cancer is guided by the moon, which is our fastest moving body. It's zipping through zodiac signs all the time. It's zipping around our entire natal birth chart within a span of 28 to 30 days. So we, I don't know if y'all have noticed this, but I've really noticed this in myself, very inconsistent energy levels with Mars and Cancer. With Mars and Leo, I think we can expect somewhat of an increase in our energy levels. However, that comes with quite the asterisk as 
Mars will be going retrograde in December. And so we'll talk about that more in next month's distant Reiki share. So Mars is not going to be moving that far into Leo, but it will be in Leo zodiac sign through the end of the year and re-entering Cancer on January 6th of next year. So we have fire energies coming through both Mercury and Mars, our mental bodies, our physical bodies, our motivation. And as I mentioned too, so January 2nd, we have the second exact of Mars opposing Pluto. This time it will be taking place in Leo and Aquarius at one degree, eight minutes, Leo, one degree, eight minutes of Aquarius. So this will be a different manifestation of those two planetary energies because it's occurring in different signs. So whatever is, you know, has been building up for these past months, coming to somewhat of a release, November 3rd, comes to a next level release, January 2nd, and will be coming to a third level of release later on in 2025. So this is an energy we need to make friends with. And I talked about it in the video for the new moon, but this is potentially a very empowering aspect if we can remember to focus on what we can control, where our agency is, to be listening to the whisperings and the urgings and the compulsions of our soul. This can be a time of very heightened spiritual awakening, remembrance of greater soul consciousness, becoming more conscious of what we have not been conscious of yet, and really taking courageous and bold soul aligned actions that the time has just come here for us to take those actions. The new paradigm is opening and growing and we're each strengthening it in our unique way. So really the invitation here is to claim your power, empower yourself, do what you can to create the life that you want to live in the collective reality that you want to be a part of for your lifetime, your gift of being a human being on earth. Very powerful energies here. Embracing passion, creativity, and inspiration with reflection. I add the with reflection because, again, both of these planets are preparing to undergo their retrograde cycle. So there can be this feeling of forward motion, retracing one steps, and then forward motion again. And it can also be a time of heightened productivity, both within the mental sphere and within more of an action-oriented doing type of sphere here as well with both Mercury and Mars involved. With so much fire to realizing that at lower levels of consciousness, this can be overly passionate and overly triggerable and irritated, irritating, irritated, you know, inflammatory. So just to cool down, take pause, take extra breaths, lots of self-care, lots of compassion and understanding for your own process and other people's processes. And also knowing that all of this is, you know, occurring over the holiday season too. So to be very flexible with your plans and things that you may have going on at this time. So in around the middle of the month here, November 11th, Venus will enter the sign of Capricorn. November 15th, Saturn in Pisces will station direct at 12 degrees, 41 minutes of Pisces. So definitely check in your natal chart. Do you have anything around that degree point? 
in Pisces, in Virgo, the Saturn will be opposing whatever your Virgo placement is. In Gemini and Sagittarius, Saturn will be squaring anything you have around 12 degrees Gemini, Sagittarius. So just something to be mindful of and noticing of. November 15th, we have the full moon in Taurus. So really mid-November, we're having this up surge in Venusian energy and Saturnian energy here. Venus is moving into Saturn sign, Capricorn, Saturn in Pisces stationing direct. The full moon is occurring in Taurus. This is Venus's sign. So what does this mean? This is a lot of divine feminine energy coming through, but in a very practical, manifestable, manifested, manifestable, <laughs> I'm wanting to say, like physical reality, focusing on the long-term, long-term vision. What are you building? What are you creating? This divine feminine energy is really seeding. It's wanting to seed. It's wanting to take root. It's wanting to flower and grow and be seen here. This is also an opportunity for stillness and reflection with Saturn stationing direct here. This is a chance to really connect with our inner authority, to connect with the authority of our soul, the authority of our spirit, and our spiritual plan as well as Saturn is stationing direct in Pisces zodiac sign. Very creative, mystical, magical, spiritually oriented on a spiritual mission would be a good way to sum up Pisces zodiac sign. And so I will do a separate video on this very powerful full moon in Taurus, included the galactic charts here, because this feels like a really powerful blessing of light that we are receiving around this time and also what we will be getting into in the next slide. The moon in Taurus will be conjunct Uranus in Taurus. Uranus, the planet of awakening, this is speaking to some of that, you know, you can't stop it, inevitable soul awakening, realizations, insight, kundalini energies aflowing at this time, and welcoming in the new paradigm, communal ways of living and being and connecting the importance of our soul family, the importance of our family of frequency here. And what feels extra super blessed too at the time of this full moon is the fact that our sun will be in alignment with this absolutely gorgeous, glorious star. Beta Centauri, Hadar, also known as a Gina star. And this is a star and star system, planetary system that really knows the meaning of unconditional love and pure love and heaven on earth and what it feels like and what it means to live in a planetary existence where all there is is love and it's beyond duality, and it's beyond polarity, and it's a place and a state of being where everybody there, all the different species are living in harmony with one another. Everybody has what they need, less physical, less dense than our earth reality, but still like physically dense enough so that there is a sense of more of that individuation and some physical needs, some of that physical reality. So this is just such a beautiful alignment here. And I love that the spotlight of our sun is really shining light on that vision. It, it seems like and feels like it's really helping us anchor that in no matter what else might be going on in the world with all of these really big dynamic energies that are at play. So the galactic support feels 
very, very strong here. And we have multiple alignments too with the black holes that feel really strong, really supportive, really like juicy for for manifestation, for calling things in. So that's another reminder to really be like, okay, where's my mind? Where's my energy? Am I focusing on what I want to create and empower? Or have I drifted somewhere? And just at least being aware of where you're at with all of that, because again, remembering how much power there is in your focus and in your own energy and where that is centered or maybe a little off centered. Finally, finally, drum roll. Pluto is entering Aquarius for good for the next 20 years, thereabouts on November 19th. This is just so, so exciting. And as I mentioned, you're all invited to explore and see if the class I'm teaching on Pluto and Aquarius feels right for you. We will be recording the class live at the time. It's actually occurring in the time frame that Pluto is entering Aquarius. So we will really be working with it really immediately. And that class will be recorded. So you'll feel the magic whether you're there or not. And we are all feeling the magic of Pluto entering Aquarius. This is undeniable. This is it's here to stay the next 20 years. And just this is just so exciting. It, it really is our new paradigm of community of the galactic of global communications and communications beyond the earth and coming together in community and understanding frequency, energy, vibration, and really working towards a greater sense of our interconnectedness with all that is certainly with one another. I think this, this transit is really welcoming us into that, that realization that we are one species, you know, we are, we need to think of ourselves as one humanity, as one earth. And, you know, the time has come for this realization to really drop in and, and be expressed fully in, in all the different aspects and areas of our life. What's really exciting about this too, there are many different facets of it, which we will be diving into in the class, but certainly just one I can mention is, so on the 19th, Pluto enters Aquarius on the 21st, the sun will enter Sagittarius and the way those two signs are oriented, this is a sextile relationship. So Pluto entering Aquarius, the sun entering Sagittarius, these, you know, Aquarius is an air sign. Sagittarius is a fire sign. They're both in that more that yang masculine type of energy. So we have this supportive sex style sun Pluto that feels very bright. It feels very expansive. It feels like a big influx of light coming in around this time, around the third week of November. And I think we're going to be ready for it. And this is also to mention too, I'm sure many of you are aware of the enhanced and increased solar activity we've been having. And, you know, probably more of that all month long, it seems like I'm not an expert in any of that, but it's something that I've been noticing and feeling in my physical body as well with fluctuating energy levels and really feeling like my own physical body is needing to adjust and rest more and calibrate to all of the cosmic energies that are coming in. So to just keep that in mind all month long, please take really good care of yourself. Sleep when you need to sleep, rest when you need to rest, drink extra water, eat well, move your body or rest, you know, just be very in touch with your physical human body feels very, very important at this time now more than ever. 
The Mercury retrograde is one of the final things I just want to share with y'all. So on November 7th, Mercury will enter its shadow phase around 6 degrees, 23 minutes of Sagittarius zodiac sign. And what that means, the pre-shadow, is that Mercury will go all the way to 22 degrees, 40 minutes of Sagittarius station retrograde, then go back to six degrees, 23 minutes. So the key with this retrograde, if you're able to find where Sagittarius zodiac sign is in your natal chart, do you have any planets, points, angles between around six degrees to 23 degrees of Sagittarius? Then these are the parts of your chart and your life experience that will be undergoing the sense of renovation, reflection, and really taking a lot of your focused energy during this time. Mercury retrograde can be a very productive period, very reflective, good time to organize things. And I really have let go and cleansed out all of the bad reputation of the Mercury retrograde. I just don't buy it. You know, I see a Mercury retrograde and I'm thinking, all right, great. I'm going to have some time and space to integrate everything that's been going on the past three or four months. And wow, there's been a lot going on the past three or four months. This is a chance to slow down, relax, breathe, journal, reflect, integrate, do those things on the to-do list, like maybe more of the tedious things that need a little bit more attention. It can just be such a productive time. And again, if you know where Sagittarius Zodiac sign is in your chart, then you'll know roughly what area of your life you will be integrating and kind of like how that integration may be facilitated during this time. So November 25th is when the retrograde begins and it will station direct on December 15th and be out of its shadow January 2nd of next year. So by January 2nd, we will feel that Mercury heading into new territory. But really, you know, it's like this feels like a good place for our heads to be, honestly, through the end of the year. Sagittarius, very optimistic sign, very much like what are the big ideas, expanding horizons, what are the possibilities here? And the, this this feels very helpful. This feels supportive. I've included here some of the key dates for star alignments that Mercury will be making, some very powerful star alignments. So November 9th, 10th, December 9th, and December 22nd, Mercury will be aligned with Royal Star Antares. This is in the heart of the Scorpion. Antares is a star that I know I really like to admire in the sky here in Hawaii, it's often very visible, very red, very fiery. And this is a spiritual warrior star. This is such a strong star of success and fame and glory and all different kinds of beautiful beings. And Tari Stargate, I mean, th this is super multidimensional consciousness that we have a chance to really entrain and connect our minds with. So definitely be writing things down, different insights, ideas, downloads that come in this Mercury retrograde. It might not yet be time to act upon them, but this feels like a great time to be really receiving lots of different insights and awarenesses and downloads. And we have more of that. November 13th, December 5th, and December 26th, Mercury will align with the Great Attractor. This is one of our supra-cosmic points 
super massive black hole source of a source of a very wide sector of the known universe, extremely powerful part of our universe, manifestation, energy, intuition, insights, downloads, channeling, you know, communication. This is already a time right now, Scorpio new moon, like communication beyond the veil and everything with these, these great attractor alignments. This is like your galactic family, you know, your multidimensional self, past, present, future, parallel, really expanding into more of who you truly are. And so th this feels like very supportive of Pluto newly also back in Aquarius. It's like our heads are going to be in the right space. Our mental bodies can potentially be very much in the right space to receive what Pluto in Aquarius is beginning to clue us into and help us remember. This is really feeling like Mercury retrograde, all of these alignments. This is a great remembering also that we're being invited into and a great healing. So at the very end of Mercury's retrograde period, it's just left its shadow. It's just entered new territory. On January 4th, it will align with Razzle Haig star in Ophiuchus constellation. This is the man in the sky. His foot is touching the ecliptic. He's holding the serpent, this magical, powerful, divine feminine energy. Ophiuchus is linked to Asclepius, the Greek master healer, dream worker, incredibly gifted resurrector of the dead. He was such an effective healer. Razzle Haig is the healer star. So this alignment, Mercury with the star, January 4th, we have high dose, high frequency healing energy of our mental bodies, of our emotional bodies, of our communication, insights, awarenesses, downloads, limiting beliefs, thought forms, anything in our mental field that needs to go, this is a time for it to go and for more of our insights, mental clarity, healed mental frameworks to really drop in and also be revealed. So extremely, extremely supportive. I love this star, Razzle Egg. Oh my goodness, such a beautiful one. So that is the astrology I'm going to present at this time. There's so much more to talk about. And just to segue into our Reiki journey here, like I said, there's so many different galactic energies to commune with. There's also like the ancestors. We have the South Node of the Moon with the super galactic center. It's that time of year too, connecting with the ancestors. So certainly feel very invited to connect galactically, connect ancestrally, connect with the planets, the zodiac signs, you know, be open to wherever it takes you. I have on screen here Andromeda Titowin because we see the sun and moon is opposite Titowin star and Andromeda. The sun and moon is also opposite Shadir star and Cassiopeia constellation. Cassiopeia, the queen, the queen mother, the pure archetype of the queen, but in the Greek mythology, this was the queen mother. Andromeda was the princess daughter. So really interesting to have this new moon be opposing stars in both of these constellations. And I also highlighted here Pluto conjunct a Ladfar star in Lyra constellation. You see the Lyre here and that particular star is on that side of the Ly Lyra of the Lyre constellation connected very much to our humanoid origins within this galaxy. So that's taking ancestral healing and ancestral connection to a whole new galactic level. So I will leave our discussion there. I'm going to stop my share.